Hey guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, I guess I'm going to break this down in 15 minute increments. I guess this might be part one if I'm not able to condense everything in one video. Um, but basically I'm here to talk about um, dreams. Um, I did a post in my story saying that I was going to post a video, so here it is, okay? Um, so, basically, okay, if you want to know, like, the basics about um, kind of, like, analyzing your own dreams and breaking them down, okay? Um, I find it to be very fun, okay? So, just like I said in the stories, um, the suggestions that I have, and, of course, you can also Google this information for yourself, um, about, you know, um, herbs that you can take that will help you in your astral experiences and in your lucid dreaming experiences. Okay, so first off, always keep a notepad. I have notepads. <laughs> notepads and journals that I get from the Dollar Tree, okay? You can also download a note app, okay? So it's very important to have that so that you can, um, you know, document it, okay? So let's say you wake up from a dream, mad symbolism. You're sitting at the corner of your bed and you're just like, <laughs> okay, you're trying to think about like, what the fuck did I just see? You're trying to make sure you remember everything, right? Um, whatever that you can remember, don't beat yourself up too bad about it, but whatever that you can remember, that's the stuff that you want to look up, okay? So if you dream about, uh, like if you see numbers, letters, the emotions, the feelings that you have within your dream, how you feel in this dream state, the people that you saw. Sometimes it could be a literal thing. Sometimes the people that are that you see in your dreams could be a symbol. They could just be a symbol. They're just another actor in a play directed by your subconscious mind. Okay? And sometimes it could be literal, sometimes it's not. Okay? Sometimes you could be yourself in a dream. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you play other people. All right? Sometimes you play other people. Sometimes you... Uh, play someone that you used to be in your past life or you play uh, your other lives in other dimensions, that's another thing too. So this is very, 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 very broad, okay? Um, focus on the colors. If you remember any colors in the dream, so basically numbers, all the foundations of learning when you learn when you was a child, right? You learn your letters, you learn your numbers, you learn your colors, you learn your shapes, Right? So that's what you need to try to remember. And then after you remember those things, then you try to remember if, if you heard any type of music, okay, any phrases, um, symbols that you might have seen. Those are things that, that you may remember from a dream uh, that you can, as soon as you wake up, you can hurry up and write it down. Or as soon as you wake up, you can hur hur hurry up and Google it on your phone. Okay, so I know a lot of people sleep with their phone next to them or around them in the vicinity next to their bed. Like, that's probably what you would want to do. Okay, especially if you have a note-taking app, too. Okay? So, yeah, pay attention to, uh, you know, uh, like I said, your feelings, uh, who you saw in the dream, what were they doing, what were they saying, were they reacting to you, were you just an observer in the dream, or... Were you an active participant in the scenes that were going on in the dream? Because some dreams, like your ancestors might just want to show you something, and they might not want you to intervene. It will just be some unspoken thing in your mind, okay? When they speak to you telepathically, like don't don't say nothing, don't do nothing. We just gonna show you something. We just want you to observe. We just want you to watch. Watch this. I'm about to show you some shit, okay? All right. So once you are able to remember some parts of your dream, you can take bits and pieces of it. And I swear, even if you don't remember the whole storyline, the whole scenario of the dream, and you just wake up and you're, like, trying to, like, fumble around, like, well, okay, it was this, it's this. It might be one or two parts that you may remember that really stuck out to you. Those are the things that you write down. And like I said, you want to write down the colors, the numbers, the smells, anything that are, that is up to five senses, okay, and what – uh, the people that you've uh, dreamt, you know, what are their signs, their zodiac sign, you know, the time that you woke up, you want to document that too. When you when you wake up, there might be a specific time that you wake up. You um, For some people, I don't know, this happens to me, you might see visions in your mind's eye shortly before you fully wake up. Like you're, you're finished with your dream session or your astral session, 
and you're kind of in between and you have dreams about waking up but you're not awake, woke up so you're almost about to wake up but you see like a mind's eye vision shortly before you get up i've been getting that lately and um for me i've been dreaming about now that i realize what i've been dreaming about but i've been dreaming about switch words and and numbers number sequences okay so numerology and switch words and if those who don't know what switch words are these are basically words that induce power that that helps to co-create your reality you can google it and or you can you can check it out on youtube it's called switch words so it'll be something like divine count now bring together love bonus jackpot speed like it's certain like words that uh help to induce a desired uh, reality and these words carry power we all know words carry power so that's what switch words is about so i was dreaming about uh, a switch word and numerology uh phrases um or whatever so you might it might come to you like that you might have like a a mind's eye vision before you wake up i don't know um, so basically, yeah, the reason why I was doing this video is that, you know, some, some people, I may have like, clients and stuff that may ask me, oh, you know, I have a certain dream, you know, when I'm giving readings to clients, uh, they may inquire about dreams and stuff like that. And I don't mind doing a dream interpretation, Tara. I do, um, I do offer that, so I don't mind. Um, however, I always want to encourage people to be the detective in your own dreams because I swear to God, it's so fun. It really is fun. Even when you are dreaming about stuff that you rather not see, and I have dreamt stuff like that, and I'm pretty sure you guys have too. You guys have dreamt about shit that you rather not have seen. Something that you that you push all the way back in your subconscious mind, like, nah, they wouldn't do that. Or, you know, nah, I'll forget that, whatever. Like, it'll come out in your dream. Whatever you're pushing way back in your subconscious, whatever issues, whatever stuff that we didn't want to work on or whatever, It'll come in your dreams. Uh, another thing, too, you can also have dreams of, like, uh, memories, maybe childhood memories. Some of these memories might not be very pleasant, but let me tell you what you do with those. You can remix your memories. Remember, you're the director. You sit in the director's chair, okay? These dreams are movies that are directed by your subconscious mind. So when you have a dream about a bad memory, you can remix that memory, because now you can go into that dream, you can remix the memory and make it into a more desirable, happy memory. Okay, you can remix it, and that'll help get, help you get over that trauma or that past experience. So this is a part of like incorporating this into your shadow work or what they call inner child work or whatever, like healing. Okay, there might be a specific something that may have happened to you when you are a child or an adolescence or even in your recent past. It might have been something that, that happened to you that was really traumatic, right? Um, and you may have dreams about it because your spirit wants you to deal with it, okay? So you can remix that memory, okay? Um, and make it into, and resolve that memory because now you know better. Now you know, okay, if I had a chance to go back in time, you know, you hear that phrase all the time, like, man, if I could just go back in time, I would do this, this, and this. You kind of can, <laughs> okay? In the dream world, you can kind of, like, uh, heal yourself from certain experiences by being able to go into the dream world. When you have a dream about that recurring memory over and over, you can remix it and actually say, you know what, now I know how to handle it now. And you're able to put that situation to bed, and then you won't dream about it again. Um... There can be, let me see, we're nine months in, good. I mean, nine minutes in. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's what you want to do when you want to, like, you know, um, break down your dreams. You want to get familiar with symbolisms and stuff, okay? So if you're not familiar with, like, numerology, you're not familiar with all that stuff, there's a couple of links, uh, places that you can go to when you Google, okay? You got to go to the great ancestors of Google, okay? Um, they got a website called auntieflow.com. They have dreamdictionary.com. You could just simply put Google in the phrase. Like, as soon as you wake up and you only remember just a few things or a couple of things, you write them down and you Google each one. Um, they're going to direct you to the top websites, which I always see is Auntie Flo, Dream Wheel, uh, Dream Dictionary, Dictionary.com, um, and something, CrystalIntuition.com, and you'll be able to see different 
um, interpretations of it. And then, of course, cultural, culturally wise, you may have things. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it's good to kind of like interpret your own dreams first before going to a reader or somebody else because you only you know what certain things may mean. It may mean something to somebody else, but. For you living that life and you see these symbols and you you grow accustomed to this symbol, so this symbolism being like this or whatever, you know, you might have to make that discretion. You might have to like, oh, okay, that's what that means. And this could be tied to culture, okay? Like, for instance, let me say, like um, in my culture, if you dream about a snake, right? If you dream about a snake, that means you got an enemy, Right? So my grandma used to have a fear of snakes, and when she said, she told me that when she drew about snakes, she kill it. She would wake me, wake me up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, Kathy, I dream about a snake. And I'm like, what happened, grandma? And I was sitting there listening to her, and she would say that she would dream about a snake, and then she would, you know, try to kill it. And she said that when you dream about a snake, that means you have a hidden enemy or whatever. And when you kill the snake, that means you, you pretty much got rid of the enemy, 11, 11 on the clock. Now, culturally wise, that might be uh, if somebody dreams a snake, like oh my God, an enemy. But my, that might not always be the case. Maybe you might had a Kundalini dream, like I did. I had a Kundalini dream. The, the snake wasn't trying to kill me. The snake was licking me in my third eye, and I was becoming one with the snake. And I'm up here wearing a, a yellow jumpsuit, and this snake was big as fuck. I should be screaming, and I, but I didn't. I was like really about to damn near make make out with the snake, okay? He was um uh, he or she was very, very sweet, very attentive, very big. It coiled around my legs and loosened up and got right to my face and started licking me right here. He wasn't trying to kill me. Now, based off of my culture, eleven fifty six, I would say, Oh my God, I have an enemy. So it just depends on the context of that dream. You may associate snakes with being bad or, or being an enemy. It depends on the context of the dream. Like if you have a bunch of snakes in the yard trying to kill you or something like that or whatever, maybe that might be what it is. But it might be a kundalini dream. You might Google the meaning of the snake, and the, the snake stands for wisdom, okay? You can look up, you can st start by doing that because sometimes we've been programmed to believe, oh, you know, snakes are bad or evil, especially somebody coming from a religious background. Oh my God, snakes, that's Satan. Oh my God, he told Eve to eat the apple. Oh my God, bad snake, bad fucking snake, right? But, um, this, if you kind of go beyond what you have been programmed and indoctrinated to learn, you can learn about the symbolism of snake across the span of many different cultures, and then you can learn that they are, uh, they symbolize, symbolize wisdom, they symbolize transformation, and they're a part of a lot of symbolism. I think for the medical sign, do they not have like a snake wrapped around it? So there's like certain symbolisms that include snakes, right? And then you start to learn the nature of a snake. You might learn that that's your spirit animal. Who knows, right? Um, you could dream about spirit animals, too. That'll be another thing I'll cover. But, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. For example, like your culture or what you associated with certain animals or certain symbolism might mean a certain thing to you because of how you grew up. But, like, my answer to that is it depends on the context in which you're having the dream, you know? Um, so, anyway, try to become your own detective of your dreams, Break down each symbol. If you dream about nothing but rats, Google rats. Google what they represent. Rat is also a Chinese zodiac sign. Google that. You're going to find your information there. If you keep dreaming about snakes, uh, Google snakes. If you keep dreaming about this, uh, the color yellow, like how I had a kundalini dream and I was wearing yellow, I Googled yellow. Hey, that's the solar plexus. That's the my, my uh, chakra right here on my stomach. That's about courage, creativity. Then I'm dreaming about this kundalini. That's You know what I'm saying? That's straightening up. That's cold at the bottom and straightening up. So you just have to follow the symbolism, document every little thing, and you will eventually be able to put things together. And if you still need, you know, uh, reading interpretation, always go to somebody that you could trust. But I highly suggest that you guys kind of become a scientist, experiment in your dreams, okay? Realize that you have a lot of power. Um, and even if you don't remember everything, like I said, the suggestion that I left on my story those are things that are going to help you remember your dreams, okay? By no will be taking a spiritual bath before you go to sleep. So, so many things that you can do, all right? Thanks, guys. Peace.